Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and I really don't like making this kind of video. I mean, it's all well and good when I do it to my, like, to my comment section, but, uh, like, I don't like correcting other YouTubers, especially when they have bigger YouTube channels than me, because, like, they should know better. They, they just should know better, right? Like, come on. So, anyway, uh, Linus, uh basically made an incorrect statement about RAM, like most people do, because most people don't understand how RAM works. Um, and this is my correction of him. But So first let's listen to what Linus has to say about these two DDR5 kits, and then I'm gonna talk about how he's wrong for about one of the things he says. Okay, Corsair has some Vengeance DDR5, 5200 megatransfer per second for 180 bucks. Oh, I think I already said that. Although it looks like that's pretty much in line with Team Group, which has a similar kit, and Kingston, which has a slightly slower kit, although the cast latencies are lower. So one of, that's one of those things where you can either go up a speed bin and increase latencies or down a speed bin and decrease your latencies, and your performance is probably going to be quite similar. One latency bin to one speed bin off, if you guys kind of understand what I mean. You kind of you kind of get what I mean, like if your if your latencies went up and your speed bin went up one, you probably would have been just as well off going down one of each, depending yeah. on the workload. Depending on and whether I'm it... just gonna stop him right there. So he's not wrong about the fact that those two memory kits are gonna perform very very similarly. I think it's right here. Oh no, a little bit. I'm just gonna reload the video. Oh, pretty good because I have the timestamp. Yeah, so. Um, he's not wrong that the 5200 kit is going to perform very similarly to the 4800 kit because the difference between 5200 and 4800, assuming that your motherboard doesn't do anything wacky to the sub timings, is 8%. And like, good luck noticing. Like, let's say you had a game that actually was entirely memory bandwidth limited, uh, or even entirely memory latency limited. It really doesn't matter in this case you would not be able to 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 tell the the difference between like just eight percent is not really a, a human perceivable improvement usually you start like things you like noticeable performance differences start like north of ten percent so anything under ten percent is like you're gonna have a hard time telling that it's even there uh but like 10 15 20 percent performance improve like performance improvements that's that's when you can sort of go like oh yeah i can see it um but anyway, um, the other thing is, like, most workloads do not scale linearly with memory bandwidth, which, in this case, that's the main difference between these two kits. So, yeah, you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these two kits in terms of performance. However, he is completely wrong about that 4800CL38 kit having better cast latency, because cast latency is measured in clock cycles, not nanoseconds, right? And this, I think, is the real problem that just, ca like, that, like, trips up most people is that the cast latency timing has the word latency anywhere in its name like it just shouldn't be there because latency right is measured in milliseconds microseconds nanoseconds or even seconds right like depends what kind of latency you're measuring like but uh yeah like latency is measured in a unit of time so some kind of seconds or something like that right um whereas Memory timings are measured in clock cycles. And the cast latency timing is no different. Like, sure, the word latency is in the name, but it's measured in clock cycles. And what this means is that if you have shorter clock cycles, which a 5200 megabits per second DDR5 kit does have compared to a 4800 megabits per second kit, um, you, you cannot just, like you can potentially spend more clock cycles doing the same thing and complete it faster than a memory kit that takes fewer clock cycles but has much longer clock cycles. So, yeah, anyway, like, let, let's calculate which, which of these two kits actually has the lower cast latency. Um, and the formula I'm going to be using is, uh, basically, we're going to punch in one second and we're going to divide it by our actual memory clock because memory timings are measured in memory clock cycles, not in the effective data rate, right? So DDR5-4800 has an effective data rate of 4800 megabits per second, but the actual clock that it runs at is 2.4 gigahertz. So we take our one second, we divide it by 2.4 gigahertz, and luckily for us, the units really like deal with themselves. 
So now we have our uh, like cycle time in nanoseconds. So one clock cycle at 2.4 gigahertz is 0 0.4166666 uh, nanoseconds, right? And now we're going to multiply this by 40 because that's our uh, like th that's the cast latency in this uh, uh, documentation from Micron that I'm using, right? So we multiply that by 40 and we get our 16.66 nanoseconds. And the reason I have this documentation here is because it actually gives us our uh, cast latency in nanoseconds, not just in clock cycles. It also gives us uh, cast latency in nanoseconds. And yeah, it's 16.666 uh, repeating uh, nanoseconds, and as you can see, that's that's the same as what I got. So this one second divided by clock speed in gigahertz times cast latency is a uh, like th this will like this will just give you the nano like the the cast latency in actual nanoseconds. So this works. So let's do that for our two uh, memory kits over here. So the Corsair kit, right, is 5200 megabits per second. So that runs at 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, we take one divided by our 2.6 gigahertz. Um, and then we multiply that by 40, and we end up with a, a cast latency of 15.38 nanoseconds. And then we take our 4800 megabits per second kit, which runs at 2.4 gigahertz. So we do 1 divided by 2.4. Um, we get that 0 0.416 uh, repeating. And then we multiply that by 38, and we end up with a cast latency of 15.83 nanoseconds. Um, so yeah, that Corsair 5200CL40 kit actually just has less latency than the 4800CL38 kit. Um, at least less cast latency. Well, no, actually just latency in general, because this, this is the part that a lot of people forget. Like your memory controller runs at a clock relative to the memory. So the higher your memory is clocked, the higher your memory controller is clocked. And therefore the faster data gets through the memory controller and to the actual CPU cores. So... Uh, in, in this case, like that CL40 kit is just better in every way than that CL38 kit. It has less cast latency, it has less latency in general, and it has 8% more memory bandwidth, assuming that all the subtimings are at least proportional, which they should be, uh, because that's how the JDEC timing standards generally work. Is like, like there are some memory manufacturers that'll do custom subtimings and they'll usually make them worse. Um, that's my experience. Like usually if you get a memory kit where there's a bunch of custom subtimings in it, those subtimings are terrible. Um, so you like usually you want the subtimings to just not be set by the memory kit whatsoever because most ma manufacturers, like I don't know why, but they just don't know what they're doing. Or they do know what they're doing and they're like intentionally uh, harming the performance of the memory for the sake of stability. Um, which... Uh, like, and when I say harming the performance, I mean, like, you turn on the XMP and the system gets slower, not faster levels of uh, just trash timings. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's a semi-regular occurrence with certain memory manufacturers and their higher-end memory kits, because, I, I don't know, like, they just can't be... Just, I, just yeah. Um, there are motherboards that circumvent, circumvent that to some extent, but yeah, that, that is one of those things where it's just like, yeah. But assuming that, like, Corsair, in my experience, has never done that. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, th this Corsair kit is just better than that 4800CL38 uh, Kingston kit because it has less cast latency, it has less latency, it has more bandwidth. And that's kind of it. It's just like, and and tech YouTubers need to just stop doing this. And I understand that it's difficult for most people to sort of get over the fact that the cast latency timing is not actually latency because like the word latency is in the name and that's really stupid that it's in the name, but it's it's not the latency. Like the latent, latency is measured in a unit of time. Memory timings are measured in clock cycles. You cannot compare uh, see how, like, you, you need to, you know, like, if you're going to make these comparisons, you need to convert into actual nanoseconds. You can't just go CL38 versus CL40 and, and go, like, CL38 is better than CL40 if we're, if you don't know, like, if you're not accounting for any differences in the clock speed. So, uh, yeah. And, and that's it. It's just, like, yeah. Like, you know, like, it, this needs to stop happening. Because, like, RAM, RAM is complicated, and big tech YouTubers just, you know, just just stop. Please just stop. Because it, it's hard enough explaining how RAM works to people 
when they don't like when they have no information whatsoever, right? Like explaining how RAM works to somebody from scratch, pretty damn difficult, right? Um, it's more difficult when they come in with a bunch of like incorrect understandings due to statements like CL38 is better than CL40 when the CL40 kit is at 5200 versus 4800 on the CL38 kit. Now, if that 4800 kit was at CL36, uh, it would actually have lower cast latency than the 5200 kit. However, the 5200 kit would probably still win in any performance test because um, cast latency on DDR5 barely makes a difference to overall performance. So, yeah, like there's the, the thing is, there is a lot more timings that affect memory performance far more than the cast latency does. Um, but we're not going to get into that in this video. I have other videos get it well, kind of getting into that. Actually, I have at least one video that gets into that. So yeah, anyway, uh, that's it. Um, so thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. I also have a Teespring and I have a Bandcamp. There's links to all three of those down in the description. You might want to check them out if you'd like to support the channel. And that's it. So thanks for watching and goodbye.